In this lesson, we're going to focus on the zero product property. And the basic idea behind the zero product property is if you're multiplying two numbers, A and B, and if A and B equals zero, then either A or B must be zero because zero times anything is zero. Now let's think about this. Let's say we have two numbers that multiply to zero. The only way this could happen is if one of those numbers is zero. For instance, if we have eight, if the first number is eight, the second number has to be zero. It really doesn't matter what the first number is. If it's six, 12, 15, as long as the second number is zero, the whole thing is gonna be zero. If the first number is zero, it doesn't matter what the second number is. It could be negative four, seven, 12. Zero times anything is zero. So whenever you have two things that multiply to zero, one of those things has to be zero. Now, this property is very useful when solving quadratic equations. Typically, when you factor a trinomial, you might get something that looks like this. And you need to solve for x. Using a zero product property, we can do that. If either x minus 3 or x plus 2 is equal to 0, this entire expression will be equal to 0. So using the zero product property, we can break this single equation into two parts. We can set x minus 3 equal to 0, and we can set x plus 2 equal to 0. Because if just one of these two factors equals 0, the whole thing is going to be 0. And so that's why we can do this. It's because of the zero product property. Now, once we have these two equations, we can go ahead and solve it. To get the answer for the first one, we just got to add three to both sides. And we'll get x is equal to positive three. For the second one, we need to subtract both sides by two. And we'll get x is equal to negative two. So that's one of the applications of using the zero product property. It's very useful when solving quadratic equations, especially when you're factoring. For the sake of practice, go ahead and calculate the value of x for these two equations. The first one is going to be 3x times x minus 7 is equal to 0. And for the second one, it's going to be 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 5 equal to 0. So use the zero product property to calculate the value of x for each of these two equations. Now for the first one, what we can do is we can set each factor equal to 0. So we could set 3x equal to 0 and x minus 7 equal to 0. For the first one, we need to divide both sides by 3. 3x divided by 3 is simply x. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So the first answer is just x is equal to 0. For the second equation, we simply need to add 7 to both sides. And we get the answer, x is equal to 7. So if we were to plug in 0 or 7, into the original equation, it's going to work. For instance, if we plug in 0 into each x value, we'll have 3 times 0 times 0 minus 7. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. 0 times negative 7 is 0. So this works. Now, if we plug in 7, it will work as well. 3 times 7 and then 7 minus 7. That's going to be 0. 3 times 7 is 21. 7 minus 7 is 0. 21 times 0 is 0. So using the zero product property, we can solve for x whenever it's in factored form. Now let's try the other example. Now we're going to follow the same process. We're going to set each factor equal to 0. 
So we'll break it up into two equations. 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. So let's begin by adding 3 to both sides. So we'll get 2x is equal to 3. And then we'll divide both sides by 2. So the first answer that we get is x is equal to 3 over 2. If we were to plug this in to the original equation, then this part will equal 0, which means the whole equation will equal 0. Now for the second one, we're going to add 5 to both sides. So we'll get 3x is equal to 5. And then we'll divide both sides by 3. So we'll get x is equal to 5 over 3. So if you were to plug in any one of these two x values into the original equation, the whole thing is going to equal 0. So that's how you can solve equations using the zero product property. First, it needs to be in factored form like this. And then you could set each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x.